But nobody is allowed to use asbestos at this point, or um, are there? It's pretty much banned in most mm -hmm. uses today in residential and commercial products. So um, where has it not been banned? You said in most products uh, are you? <laughs> foreign countries, you'll find it, okay. but pretty much in the United States, it's pretty well it regulated, right? Banned, so and you, it, you it. could find it even on old linoleum, mm -hmm. the backing, the paper backing, yeah, glues that hold down floor tile and carpets. Mm -hmm. That's suspect material. Mm -hmm. um, everybody's probably aware of the nine by nine floor tiles. Yep. The orange, even some the of the older twelve by twelve mm -hmm. are suspect for asbestos too. So, uh, sheetrock. Mm -hmm. Joint compound, um, the material that they use on, when they do the joints, mm -hmm. they put that on there. That's suspect material also. So. Let me ask you another question. If yeah. those tiles are you know, not broken, they're in an in a ideal shape, just like the mm -hmm. tiles in front of us, yeah. would it be acceptable to put a new carpet on top, like when you renovate your basement? That's what most people will do. Uh, is that if it's if it's in good condition and not popping up yeah. and not broken, mm -hmm. most people will just cover right over top of them. To remove them mm -hmm. can be very expensive. Uh, you could be talking I thousands of dollars to have a you know a professional come in and do it correctly do it correct, without yeah. creating a hazard in your home. So, right. And right. That, it's very controlled environment when they do the removals. Yeah, I I have seen this once. It's yes. it's unbelievable. Yes. I mean, it's the the government is involved too. So yes. it's, it's almost true. scary when you see the guys coming in with their Tyvek suits and their respirators exactly. and you're like, oh, this is serious. That is serious. <laughs> it's very Absolutely. serious, yes. I remember one house and I think we found asbestos mold. So those guys there yeah, haven't one, left one that house the, for a long time. <laughs> right. One of the issues with mm -hmm. asbestos, if you do inhale the fibers, mm -hmm. It's not going to affect you immediately. Mm -hmm. It could take 15 to 30 years before you start getting the effects. And mm -hmm. it's uh, asbestosis, mesothelioma, mm -hmm. the cancer-causing materials mm -hmm. inside. So it, it has a real long latency period. So that's interesting. You, know, you could do it today, and you're not going to be affected for 15 to 30 yeah. years later. So, wow, scary. Yes, <laughs> very. <laughs> well, but at least our children uh, might be protected, right? Hopefully, yeah, yes. Abandoned. yes. On time. Mm -hmm. um, lead based paint. Lead based paint is another very big um, issue in the United States and so in other countries. Yes. Would you tell us a little bit about lead based paint? What, what is it and how does it affect us? Lead, like asbestos, mm -hmm. is a great product. Mm -hmm. uh, lead was put into paint to make it more durable, mm -hmm. more weather resistant. Uh, when they took the lead out of the paint, mm -hmm. Um, it did not hold up as well. Um, lead paint back in the 30s and 40s, you could mm -hmm. get 5, 10, 15 years out of a paint job. Mm, I would have liked that. <clears throat> now you're lucky to get three to four years out of a paint because they've taken the, the actual lead out. Uh, mm -hmm. Back in its heyday, back in the 30s and mm -hmm. 40s, uh, you could buy a gallon of paint with up to five, almost 10 pounds mm -hmm. of pure lead in one gallon of paint. Wow. So when you start spreading that around the mm -hmm. house, you know, layer after layer, you could potentially have a thousand pounds of lead basically wrapping your home. Wrapping, yeah, so your when house. you go out there now and start sanding and scraping, now you're just creating all that lead dust. But, but again, just like asbestos, it's a mm -hmm. great product when it's intact and in good condition. And it was banned actually in a lot of foreign countries at mm -hmm. the turn of the century. We did not ban lead paint in the United States until 1978. Right. So any house up until 78 could potentially have lead in it. Have lead in, yeah. Easy. I grew up in Germany and I remember it has been yes, a, yes. Bonnet a long, long, long time ago. Yes. The United States was a little bit behind yeah. on doing the banning of that. Yeah. Yes. Wow. So, um, another one of the things that we do is uh, lead paint inspections. Mm -hmm. um, in order to identify each individual surface that could potentially have lead, we use mm -hmm. what they call an XRF testing device. Oh, interesting. It's, it's like mm -hmm. going to the, best way to explain it is like going mm -hmm. to the dentist and x-raying your tooth. Yeah. So we will take and do a reading on every individual painted surface mm -hmm. on the outside, and this will record the information in the instrument. We download it to a computer, and it'll tell us within probably five to ten seconds whether you have lead in that particular surface or I not. I see. And it's, it's really important to know exactly what components on a house has lead or doesn't have it because if you go out there and start scraping and sanding down this exactly. windowsill here, you want to know if you're disturbing lead paint or not because it could be a, a very, very big issue. So how do you, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I'm going to interrupt you, okay. if, if you have a house which needs to be painted and you still have lead-based paint on your house, how do they protect the neighbors? 
the yards? I mean, how do you protect the neighbors? How, um, yeah, yeah. Well, well, we'll fast forward a moment, and there's a, a new federal mm -hmm. rule that is out there that mm -hmm. basically says anyone going out there as a hired contractor mm -hmm. must now take a lot of precautions to protect the homeowner. Mm -hmm. They must notify the homeowner, one, by giving them the CPA brochure, mm -hmm. which basically spells out exactly what they're going to do when they do work on their home. They're going to set up plastic on the outside. Mm -hmm. any, so if anything falls off the house, it's contained on that plastic. Mm -hmm. uh, there's procedures that they have to use as far as how much plastic they can put down, okay. how to clean up properly, how to verify that they've cleaned up properly. Mm -hmm. And this has to be done on the outside and inside and of inside. the house. Um, if they're doing basically a simple window replacement, they have to put plastic down on the outside and on the inside mm -hmm. to you know, contain anything that could potentially come off of this floor here. Mm -hmm. uh, and when they are done, there's certain procedures that they have to take to do a cleanup and they have to verify that they've cleaned up properly. Mm -hmm. And this is all documented because of this new EPA rule. So, so anyone Good that protection. is going to call a contractor, the contractors, the mm -hmm. company must be registered with the EPA mm -hmm. as a company the at least one individual from that company must mm -hmm. have a one day training course which is very extensive mm -hmm. uh, and oh dear. this is the manual that the students get on a when they come in to do the one day course mm -hmm. and you can see there's about 500 pages of requirements in here for a contractor that is serious it's very serious and there's a lot of information in here that they have to absorb in mm -hmm. basically one day in one day wow. but it's this is a federal rule that came out this year so every every new every worker every handyman a company hires yes to help out yep. has to go through this Anyone and they have to prove it too being paid for compensation mm -hmm. yeah whether it's bartering, mm -hmm. um, doing somebody a favor, if mm -hmm. somebody gives somebody a cup of coffee to paint their window, yeah. that's that's a form of payment. So that everybody has to, you know, adhere to these okay. rules and regulations. And if they fail to adhere to these, there are some mm -hmm. very stiff fines by the EPA, up to thirty-seven thousand dollars per violation. Wow. Huh? So. Yeah, it, but uh, I think that's a wonderful thing. I mean, it yes. protects. Um, Not just I'm us, a, protects the environment too. Right. Uh, I'm an EPA accredited training provider, and yeah. since January, I've uh, has about 65 classes, and I've trained probably 12, 1300 contractors in mm -hmm. Connecticut so far. But there's probably over 100,000 contractors in Connecticut mm -hmm. alone that are going to be required because you're looking at property management companies right. with their maintenance staff, uh, yeah, schools, that's correct. daycare centers. So everybody has to adhere to it if it's a child-occupied facility or a residential mm -hmm. property. Yeah. So if Painter Miller would hire you, would have to hire you, you would teach Correct. him yes. and so yes. his appointment? Yes. Okay. We are, we're doing classes basically mm -hmm. on a weekly basis right now, trying Wonderful. to get the, uh, the, the uh, contractors up to speed. Um, once you have identified lead on a project, mm -hmm. on a home, um, one of the things that we can do is actually do dust wipes mm -hmm. uh, because this window here looks like it's in excellent condition mm -hmm. but if there's lead paint on this window every time you raise and close the window it creates friction right. so you're getting dust from the inside and outside that dust binds up on the window sill mm -hmm. and if there's a child around that's where the child can come up get it on their hands right. hand to mouth contacts and mm -hmm. that's where they ingest it so we can do a dust wipe mm -hmm and send that to a laboratory and have it analyzed to just see how much lead mm -hmm. is actually on this particular surface. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Typically when we do them, we will do a window sill. We'll open up the window, do the window well, and actually do one right on the, the floor itself. Because when you open up a window, if there's mm -hmm. a little bit of breeze blowing, that dust can blow right out into mm -hmm. a room. And by the time it settles on Correct. the floor. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Tim, we have five more minutes left. Mm -hmm. Can you Five minutes it? left. Time is going, okay. Time is going to fast. Wow. I was wondering if we could just talk maybe a little bit about mold. Maybe yes. How can mold happen? How can we prevent mold? And what is mold? 
Mm. Mold. Until your article you can wrap mold, it up in two minutes. <laughs> the simplest way to say it is mold. A lot of people say, well, I don't have mold mm -hmm. in my house. If I reach out like this, mm -hmm. I just grab probably 20 different types of mold spores because they're floating around in every environment. Mm -hmm. Probably the only place you will not find mold is in a hospital clean room, hopefully. Interesting. So what happens when those mold spores that are floating around mm -hmm. come in contact with a surface, a wall, and then that wall gets wet, mm -hmm. those mold spores will start growing. And that's why all of a sudden you start seeing dark spots on your mm -hmm. walls when they get wet. Now the bad thing, there's good and bad about mold. Uh, the good is mold will actually eat what it starts growing on because it gives off enzymes and it breaks it down. Mm -hmm. Now the garbage that we throw out every week goes to the landfill, mm -hmm. it's the mold that actually eats the garbage. If it wasn't for mold, our garbage would be up to the moon right now. So that's the good part. The bad part is if it winds up on your walls or on your floors, it starts to, excuse me, deteriorating those surfaces. A lot of simple things you can do as a homeowner to prevent mm -hmm. something like this. As you can see here, this was a, a laundry room. Of mm -hmm. course, the washer and dryer are now removed, but I've seen it, it was a $5 hose that broke when the homeowner was not there. Hot water went all through the basement. That $5 hose caused probably $10,000 exactly. worth of damage. Exactly. An easy fix. I mean, you can go and buy with a high pressure hoses, replace them, and not worry about them. This was a rubber hose that broke, so. I have seen homes like this. Yes. And it's now, again, this is the same home, so mm -hmm. it went through the okay. whole entire basement. So the whole entire basement had to be gutted right down to the frames. So. That's a bummer. And we see this all the time. So um, that is a vacant home, obviously, right? Um, the people at the time were mm -hmm. on vacation. That's oh, usually when the yeah. pipe breaks is when you're on vacation. So or, it grows uh, that fast. It, it, oh, this can start growing like this in three, four, five days. Wow. It only takes 24 hours for mm -hmm. mold to actually start growing. I see. So, but there's one of the biggest issues around the home, especially if it's in the lower level, mm -hmm. is drainage around the outside of the house. Mm -hmm. You've got to get the water to flow away. And many times we look at a house and we see that the ground is tapered towards the foundation. Mm -hmm. Water goes in, comes down, and comes right back up through the foundation. The downspouts, you've got to extend them out extend from the them house from. to get them away from it. So, That's what I recommend. So you've got to prevent the moisture from happening to begin with. So, you know, And to go in there and say, okay, you've got mold. Okay, let's cut this out and replace it. If you don't correct the problem that caused it, mm -hmm. you're it's wasting your back. time and money. You know? If this was a basically a drainage issue on the outside mm -hmm. and you just replaced all this material, it's going to start growing again. So you've got to correct what caused the mold to begin with. So that's a typical black mold, <coughs> which is obviously um, very dangerous to our health. In this picture right mm -hmm. here, there's probably 20 different types of mold. The really bad one that you always hear mm -hmm. about, the stacky mattress, the, the, uh, the black mold, <laughs> is mm -hmm. usually the one that grows down here where it's really wet. As it dries mm -hmm. up, you get different types of molds competing. Mm -hmm. But any mold is bad because it's going to create issues with that. And a lot of people are allergic to mold. Um, some people, you can spend right. five people into this room, only one of them may come out with an itchy eye or a rash. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't affect everybody the same. But right. Same thing, would you say like health issues can appear later or is it more an immediate uh, reaction? Uh, it can bo go both ways. You mm -hmm. can become susceptible to it over mm -hmm. time. Some people, if they walk into this room, will, will pass out on the floor. Interesting. They're that you know, susceptible to it. Anybody mm -hmm. with uh, allergic reactions or mm -hmm. asthma or immune deficiencies, mm -hmm. they're more susceptible to something like this. Interesting. Yeah. So we got to wrap it up. We have okay. a minute left. <laughs> so overall, it seems like mold is, it's something we all have in our house. So oh, yes. proper uh, ventilation, Yes. open your windows, um, have some fresh air, make Keep sure that your attic is very right. well insulated, uh, not insulated, ventilated. but ventilated. Yes, yes. Um, Keep it dry. Keep it dry, Keep exactly. It dry, right. Well, thanks a so lot. Very You're relevant welcome. information. Thank and you. Uh, I learned a lot too tonight. And uh, I'm sure our audience out there too, if Hopefully. there are any questions, uh, I'm sure Ginny Birch will be happy to answer any questions. Again, um, the, his number and also his website will be posted um, at the end of the show. You can also call the West Hartford Community Television for his contact information okay. or if you have any other questions regarding real estate. Um, Tito and his uh, volunteers will be happy to give you our contact information. Um, I hope you enjoyed this show. Have a wonderful um, January, hopefully with not too much snow, but enough snow to entertain the children. <laughs> <laughs>
and thanks so much for planning in and have a wonderful evening. And thanks, Thank uh, Tien, for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you.